Hey, I got my camp. Look, I got a new garment. Oh. You see, I'm wearing it inside out. You say, why are you wearing it inside out? Because I'm remembering back in the days of slavery. That's right. You know, I shook hands. No, no, Mr. Foley, I'm talking to you. Oh. Pay attention to me. This is, sorry, this sorry, is a sorry, modern sorry. gadget. This is, this is a slave time. You can't be looking at some gadget, <laughs> checking whatever y'all checking those gadgets like that. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, yeah. I, I, I met Dick. I, I shook hands with Dick Gregory. I told oh. you know, Bobby Dick Gregory, peace and blessings upon his eternal soul. Shook hands with a lot of people. Now, one of the things I know about, well, Dick Gregory had said, is that during slavery time, see, First of all, people should know that you bought me this fine, I call it a slave garment. Slave garment. Because you see how it's cut, and I got it inside out. Because Dick Gregory would say that, you know, back in slave time, you know, they they do tattered clothes and everything like that. You know, in fact, people think the slaves didn't report. You know, when they was working those, well, they would break the holes. You know, the you know the the the, the, the shrink, they they'd break it. <laughs> I don't want to work. You know, they didn't want to work. They didn't want to work for the man. They didn't work for himself. Anyway, the point is. Since that time, you know, but, but, you know, since them times, I'm not, I'm talking before slavery, I'm talking when we captive, captive, kidnapped, you know, the whole thing, you know, that, 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 a captive, kidnapped, enslaved, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, so-called, not even free, then, 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 then you go to the antebellum period with some of the, then, then they say, hey, you gotta get, and it's set upon by them, 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 them white mobs, and, and you know, uh, every time you had a thing, they knocked them back down, you, you, you had to, uh, you know, the, what they, they back incarcerated, then you was free, but then they put you in jail for loafing around and stuff like that, then you had the chain gang, in fact, do you know, I'm gonna let me get a, a fact. People think that, you know, black music they come from the spirituals during slavery. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it really came, what really jumped to the next thing, like the blues, came from them chain gangs. Blues came from the chain gang, I insist, right? Then, uh, then of course, you had to, you know, every time we could get some of the white moms and bombers and the whatever have you, and then, of course, you had the, the Jim Crow and the lynchings, and then you had this, you know, the red line of segregation, and then, and then we had to struggle with the civil rights, you know, as soon as we get the civil rights gained, and then what would happen, you know, then then they then they said, oh, blah, blah, you know, in fact, let me, let me show you something. I'm going to show you something here. Mm -hmm. See, because... I have a, I, I, I'm not into it, but I have conspiracy theory. Let me put, let me put a conspiracy theory hat on. This is my conspiracy theory hat. As you know, with a conspiracy theory, you always have a, a tiny bit of fact in there. Okay, now I brought you up to like basically 19, say, well, let me put it this way. Lyndon Johnson made this speech at Howard University in 65 saying, hey, you know, you black people had a hard time, and so we, we as a country, we're going to make it up for you, you know, so we're going we're gonna to have this, you know, you know, this uh, affirmative action thing or something like that, just, just, just for you, you formerly enslaved kind of people, right? And this was like 65, you know, 64, whenever it was. But then right away, almost like right away, they, put, they started letting, they said, well, from, let's change this to, to not only just, just you enslave people, but this is going to be included a bunch of people like women's and, and uh, what do you call that, that, people that's coming in. There. We're going to start letting people in the country and say, then they're going to take, you know, see, see what they're doing? But let me show you something from my, look, school days. Look at this. This is a class picture. Well, this is another school days here, too. School days, these are pictures we used to take in, in elementary school and stuff like that, the class picture at the end of the year, you know? Mm. In fact, you know, like, yeah, end of the year. This is 1961, this is 1962. 1961, this is my class. I, I, when I was teaching at University of Cape Town, I have an office and I put these two in the office. People said, what's that? I said, it's called Find the Anthony. Because I'm in this picture someplace. I'm not gonna tell you where I am. I'm not going to tell you where I am, but if, and here too, see, this is the next year. So I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you where I am, but I want you to notice something about these pictures. Just look at them. Now remember, this is 1962. You can hold this one here. That's Mrs. Jolt, right? No, okay. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see. No, this is a, oh, this is Mrs. Rose. Oh, no, I got to, oh, no, I got to keep Mrs. Rose. I love Mrs. Rose. This is Mrs. Jolt. So, yeah, see, that's the teacher right there, Miss Joe. So you 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 hold on to that. You can look at that. I'm not see this. No, move that out the way. I, my pit, my I, this is cons see, I'm being conspired against already, man. They taking my picture. They taking me, erasing me from the situation. 
that's what they that's what they did. Now I want you to notice this is South Bronx, okay? This is William Lloyd Garrison School, public school 31 up in the concourse, okay? Now, what do you notice about this picture? Okay? South Bronx. Now South Bronx remember had a different reality in a bunch of other places because we were totally integrated. We, we, we had no integration problems. You see, Harlem may be all black and some places more white. But anyway, but we, we went to school, but basically, let me show you something. See this white person right here? See the white person right there? I grew up in the projects. That's Marlene, Marlene Laxina. Laxina's were our, literally our next door neighbors in the project, the next apartment over. And next to them was the Garcias, you see? So we're not, so basically we had everybody, well not everybody, but in the South Bronx at the time, you had white, black, Puerto Rican, okay? Now we didn't call them Puerto Rican, we called them Spanish. We, we, we were just Spanish though, this is not Latino, this is Spanish, Spanish, you know what I mean? That's what it is, because that's the language they spoke. Okay, that's all you had in the Bronx. Now you say, well, what a waste, you got a lot of white people. Yeah, yeah, some white people there, but there's other, there's Jewish people. Where were the Jewish people? They were up on the concourse. Now remember, uh, PS31 was right there on the concourse, like on 43rd Street, d down from the courthouse, down from, you know, down from Yankees, oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, it's a big castle, it looked like a castle. Like I said, we walk up the hill to, to the school. But we met the Jewish people at school because they were on the concourse, and all the rest of us, that came, we came from different directions. And so this is what it looked like. This is what, this is what New York City, basically, or South Bronx, looked like. You say, why do you say that? Well, then what started to happen, all of a sudden, you know, now you don't have to, what, here's a slick thing. In 65, there was a, a coup, uh, whatever, the, the United States did something to the Dominican Republic, and so all those people started to come up. Now, they were smart. I got to hand it to Dominic, all the white Dominicans. They were smart, because they slipped in under the Puerto Ricans. So we didn't know, we just, they were Spanish like everybody else. And they didn't say nothing. So the Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans, we just called them, well, they Spanish, you know? This is after 65. Okay. So, so, so now all these, so they started to come in. Now here's a joke, here's a joke, here's a joke. It took us a long time to, not long time, black and Puerto Ricans, they would get it for a long time. Oh, it's just Arturo Sonberg and all this. They were all, Puerto Ricans were always the allies before whatever time. Now, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. We used to dress, you know what I mean? With black people, we have a certain way of dress, whatever have you. Not all these colorful things, not all these clashing things. You know, you wouldn't wear polka dot and stripes. I mean, I would go out, if I'm going out the house, my, my girl said, what, what, boy, where are you going? What do you got on there? Go in there and change it, because you got to look good. But we were teaching everybody else how to, how to dress. And that was, in the 70s, that always fell apart, because when the Jamaicans and stuff started to come up, they didn't care, you know what I mean? And we couldn't talk to them anymore, because, you know, they, they sort of, well, Jamaicans are Jamaicans. Okay, so what I'm saying, right, is that this was a different reality. Then come the 70s and 80s and all these other groups started to come in and started to, you know, alter our, our, our course of things. But then they just did that, but then they started to take out thunder. Things that we, that we for, us, for, for centuries, if you want to put it that way, for decades and decades that we were earned, we'd go through all this, this strife and whatever have you. Then they started to take out stuff. Here's my concerns. Then now, okay, let me jump now. Let me jump to the point here, because we can't make this too long. Here's the thing. Right now with the, you know, uh, uh, American descendants of chattel slavery, we have all these people, you know, the, the Pan-Africanists who have their own agenda. We have, I don't know, we have, I got, now I got black socialists. We got all these people saying, oh, hey, Dios, they're divining. That's not a proper movement. They don't know what they're talking about. We got scholars behind this movement. It's, it's not just, you know, I mean, it's, everybody, it's, it's, yes, it's Yvette Cornell and Antonio Moore, but behind them, they're going to the data and scholarships, you know, so you got Professor Sandy Darity out of Duke, you know, you, 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 got, the, you got the Professor Hamilton out of, out of New School in New York. This is the backup. When these people start sniping us, they don't go talk to those people. They don't even talk, they don't even go to ADOS.com, ADOS101.com uh, to find out anything. They just blah, 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 blah. Now, here's the thing. Here's what I really don't understand. Your people don't understand. Africa is a place. If you're a pan Africanist, and you know, now, Mr. Tully, you're, you're an African. What do they think about pan Africanism in Africa? Tully's shakes. He's shaking his head. He's shaking his head. Because. African is tribal. They don't remember Pan Africanism was born in the United States. 
showed up in the United States. Like everybody comes to the United States, with, but, but but now they come to the United States just for money. Back then they came to struggle with us, but now they just coming for money. You know, you got people who's born. You know, I don't. I'm gonna get into that. So it's kind of strange. The Pan Africans, because they're not successful in what they're supposed to be doing, the yacht in the world, and not just 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 African disport. They're not successful with that. They're not successful. So now when you have this movement that they can see is going to be, they're trying to say, oh, they're not valid. They're trying to jump, you know, jump, jump in front of the movement. It's kind of strange. Well, it's not strange. It's, you know. Jumping but, in front but, of the car. But you know what I say, you know, ADOS is bulletproof. It ain't going to work. You don't need to give it up. Just give it up. You had to just give it up. Go. Go. Sit down. You know, and you can, yeah. anyway. So my conspiracy theory is that these people, not only they're jealous, but did they trying to derail this thing because they're afraid to be liberated. This is a movement of true liberation. They're scared. They're quaking in their boots. Oh, oh, oh. So they get on the, 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 the YouTube and they get on the, the, the little you know blogs or whatever. Have you say, oh, oh, this is invalid. Oh, these people. Then they try to character assassinations or whatever have you. But it ain't gonna work this time. That's the point. It can't work because it's a you know, the feminists, everything, they, they'll push the side. No, it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. So says me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the trench to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect sitting right here at a desk of the oh. ADOS. You can cut it off now. This is, this is my cameraman. Thank you.